you're thinking about moving or relocating to Columbus, Ohio, and starting to do a little research about the city and the areas around it, you're probably wondering, how does Columbus compare to where I'm moving from? How much is the housing? What about property taxes? And what else do I need to know before I move there? Well, having been born and raised here in Central Ohio, I'm gonna fill you in on everything you absolutely need to know before you move here. It all starts right now, so let's go! Hey, and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Mark Van Stein. I make videos about what it's like living in Columbus, Ohio. I cover things like the best schools, neighborhoods, areas, cost of living, and everything you need to know so you get a really good feel on what it's like to live here in the capital city. If you enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up button down below and make sure you subscribe because I'm dropping new videos every week all about what it's like living here in Columbus and its many suburbs as well. And most importantly, if you're thinking about relocating or moving here, make your life a little easier and give me a call. I'm a full-time Remax realtor and have been helping people relocate and move to Columbus for over 18 years now. You can give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I literally get phone calls, emails, texts from people moving and relocating every week. I absolutely love to help. Columbus is a wonderful city. And here are some of the things about Columbus that you'll need to know prior to moving here. First, Columbus is a large city with a small town feel. Columbus is actually the 14th largest city in the United States by population. And we're talking larger than San Francisco, Denver, Nashville, Charlotte, Indianapolis, but really retains that small town charm. Even when I was growing up 30 or 40 years ago, Columbus nearly wasn't the city it is today. I mean, it was a glorified cow town, but the city continued to grow and really took off with some of the larger companies that were founded here in central Ohio or moved to the area. These companies started bringing in top talent from other parts of the country, you know, mostly more progressive cities, and those people wanted the same amenities available here where they were moving from. With this growth, the city has really sprawled. The suburbs exploded and development was easy because a lot of that land was just farm or agricultural land. Now the suburbs have started to connect with other cities nearby, like Delaware on our north side. Because Intel's building such a large manufacturing site northeast of Columbus, that growth is probably going to grow into Johnstown and out into Granville as well, kind of similar to like a Phoenix or a Dallas. All this growth and diversity of industry have really made our economy quite strong. My mother used to say we have a bulletproof economy here in Central Ohio for a couple of different reasons. First is because we are the state capital. I'll have Ohio State University here both, which are huge economic engines. Ohio State is the largest university in the country with over 50,000 students and an enormous employer and investor in the city. We also have over 25 Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered in Central Ohio. Some of the largest employers include JP Morgan Chase, Honda, Nationwide Insurance, L Brands, and Cardinal Health. JP Morgan Chase building up off of Players Parkway is like the fourth or fifth largest building in the country, like right behind the Pentagon. It is never a good idea to be around that building during rush hour. You have been warned. <laughs> and the jobability around the city is amazing. All these huge companies, the university, the government offices, and the diversity of industry really keeps the Columbus market very, very stable. Number three are the great school districts. Columbus suburbs have excellent school systems, some of which are ranked at the top of the state. There are literally 10 to 12 districts in Central Ohio, which I would have absolutely no problem recommending to my clients. I break down these districts on a separate video on this channel. If you're moving to Columbus and have school-aged children, or schools are important to you, make sure you reach out to me, or you can always drop a comment down below for even more insight. The highest ranked schools are usually the ones most asked about. 
the ones my clients are constantly asking me for information about, where the families with the children usually start their home search. The good news is that there are many good options out there and some very, very excellent private options as well, as well as some really good Catholic schools. All these great school districts come at a cost, and that cost is high property taxes. On the positive side, at least your tax dollars are going through something worthwhile. My clients that I relocate from other parts of the country like Colorado and Texas, where the property tax is relatively low, are absolutely shocked about how high the property taxes are here. In fact, they are comparable to some of the most expensive parts of the country. On the county auditor site, Delaware and Franklin, there is a tax estimator for each property. If you're thinking about purchasing a home, it's worth doing a little bit of investigating on different areas. It, but it also is just not the property taxes you need to be concerned about. Be careful of the city and local income taxes as well. For example, I'm a perfect example. I live in a suburb called Powell. I have a Powell mailing address, but I don't live in the city limits. Therefore, I'm not subject to the city income tax or the Powell city taxes. If you're buying, it's really important your realtor knows some of these highly desirable areas because there are some areas that you can live and have a slightly lower tax base. If you're looking in one of these desirable areas, reach out to me, I'd love to guide you. Along with the high taxes come the high cost of housing. Taxes certainly play into that number, but even with the high taxes, the price of a home can be very high in the most desirable areas. What fuels the high cost of housing in some of these areas? Well, number one, it's the high quality of the school district, compounded by the growth the city is experienced. When I relocate someone into Columbus, their housing choices are usually based on a couple of different factors. One is obviously the price point. The second is going to be location, based on where that person might be working. And third, and maybe the most important, is the school district, if that person has a school-aged child or children getting close to school age. I spoke about schools a little bit earlier, but the best regarded school districts are always going to have the highest demand. Now, there will be a big discrepancy on what type of home your dollar will buy you comparatively in different areas of the city. I actually go into a deeper example of this on a different video on this channel. For example, where $500,000 might buy you a three bedroom, 1,700 square foot home with a one and a half bath, an area closer to downtown, with that same investment, you could purchase a four bedroom, three full bath home with 2,700 square feet, a little bit further outside Columbus, and still be in a fantastic school district. It really all depends on your wants and needs. The most important thing to know is it can get expensive. Columbus in general is a clean, trash-free city. Well, what exactly does that mean, Mark? Fortunately, we don't have some of the homeless problems that have made headlines in some of the other larger cities in the United States. Now, don't get me wrong, we do have homeless here in Columbus, Ohio, which is heartbreaking. One person being homeless is absolutely one too many but we don't have the 10 cities along the sidewalks and underpasses that many other areas have to deal with. Also, the city of Columbus does a great job in keeping the streets free of debris and trash. When I help someone relocate to Columbus, I'll often give them a tour of the downtown areas. I'll often get accused, jokingly of course, of showing them just the nice clean areas. The reality is we do have some areas that struggle. However, the greater metro area and surrounding areas like German Village, the Short North, Victorian Village, the Enrin District are just that clean. Last are the people of Columbus, and maybe that might be our greatest asset. I mentioned earlier Columbus is a large city, but has a small town feel. Maybe it's being in the Midwest, but people seem just to be more open and accommodating than other parts of the country. They are happy to help you if you get to go to the store or market and have a question. You might catch a smile or a hello as you're walking by in the street, or someone may just chat you up in line at the grocery store. Depending on where you might be moving from, this could all seem very, very strange. But all this is quite normal here. A perfect example happened to me a few months ago. I was out showing homes on a Sunday, and after I left my clients, 
every warning light on my car starts to go light up like a Christmas tree and the car shuts down and I roar to the side of the road. You gotta love technology. Luckily, I have road service through my dealer, but as I sat there and waited for the tow truck, no less than three people stopped and asked if I needed help or if there was something they could do for me. It was just so nice knowing that I live somewhere where people still looked out for one another. Boy, there's a lot to know about Columbus, Ohio. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up down below. It just lets YouTube know that, hey, Mark's doing a good job and I enjoyed the video. If you're interested in knowing more about Columbus, please subscribe to the channel because I'm dropping new videos every week all about Central Ohio and the suburbs. If you're moving or relocating to Columbus, make sure you give myself and my team a call. Moving to a new city is super stressful. Let me and my team make your life a little bit easier. You can call, text, email me. Our contact information is at the end of the video and down below as well. So until next time,